What is up guys, Josh here, and today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing the unboxing and initial impressions review of the Phoenix Pro PTX30 live audio mixing console. Now, you guys remember Phoenix Pro, we did a review of a microphone system of theirs a while back, and it did extremely well, and they actually saw that video and they wanted to send out this mixing console for free for me to take a look at. So let's go ahead and get to getting this thing out of the box. Now the box for this thing was absolutely huge. So as you can see, I had to not only film on my iPhone for the unboxing, but I also had to set it to 0.5 just so we could get the entire thing in the box. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself. On the top of the box, it says PTX30 in very large letters. And right below it, we can see eight channel audio mixer soundboard system, BT USB interface, 99 DSP effects, features separate USB B recording and studio monitoring. I want to believe that this is just a typo. And then at the top, it says the rugged, reliable mixing board for studio, recording, music recording, stage, and karaoke. On the left side of the box, we have the system highlights, which includes the 32-bit dual engine DSP, the XLR left and right outputs, and the USB-B recording. On the back of the box, we have a bunch of specifications. I'll leave a picture on the screen in case you guys want to read any of these, but I'm not gonna go through every single one. And on the left side of the box, we just have the product warranty information. So now let's go ahead and get to the actual unboxing experience, which is rather nice. Once you're able to cut the tape on the top of the box, you're able to open it and you can actually pull the mixer out uh, with one hand. It is rather heavy, but you can do it with one hand. And as you can see, it is packaged with foam on both sides and wrapped up in some kind of plastic material. So once we're able to get that out, we're able to undo the plastic material. And so we can take a first look at the board. We have our input, which is a combined XLR and quarter inch input. We have our gain or trim. We have our EQ. We have our effects knob. We have our pan for left and right and we have the gain sliders. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get this board all connected up so we can see stuff from it. All right, so right now I am recording on the, um, on the computer. I'm recording through Audacity right now. Um, <laughs> oops. Yeah, so I'm recording through Audacity right now into the computer. I have no type of compressor whatsoever. I do, however, have control, very fine control of the the um, microphone right here. So right now I'm like right up on it. Now I have it, now I have it a little ways away. As you can see, I can make it sound good no matter where I put it. So, so yeah, this is not only a test of how it sounds there, but what I'm also going to do is shove in a 32 gigabyte USB stick. Alright, so I just want to show you guys a uh, redone part of the USB part of this video. So when I did the USB section in the original video, I wasn't understanding how to do it, but I emailed Phoenix and they explained it to me. So now that we have our USB ready, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you actually get into it. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the board and I've already connected up to USB B so we can start recording the output through Audacity on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And we are going to, once it pops up, all right, so I'm going to select USB headphone set, which is what this is, and start recording. So, <clears throat> uh, and then I also need to monitor the audio. Okay, so now I'm listening to the output of the board. So, uh, I just wanted to show you that once you go ahead and plug the USB in with our MP3 track on there, it should... Well, that says Bluetooth, but we should be able to switch it to MP3, and it should start playing. So I don't think I actually did a very good job of explaining how I got the USB part working. I kind of just showed it. So the way you actually get the USB to work is that once you take a 32 or smaller gigabyte flash drive, you have to format it as XFAT on your computer, 
and then type in whatever you want to call it. It does not matter to me. And once it's formatted, you have to copy an MP3 file to it. Not a WAV, not an AAC, not an M4A. It has to be an MP3. And so once that MP3 is on there, then you can go ahead and shove it in and start recording. And we should be able to switch it to... Did I not put the track on here right? Okay, well anyway, I know I have one that works, so this on USB stick, it might be because that one's bigger. But this is a 16 gigabyte stick, and this one I know works. So you can go ahead and plug it in, and it will automatically start playing the track. So if I bring it up, you can see the track is coming through, and we can EQ it and all that stuff. But I'm gonna keep this down so you can still hear. If while we're playing, you can switch it to here, then it will start recording. So it'll automatically quit playing. And once you push the uh, button, it starts recording. So once you see the counter start going, that means we're recording. So now anything that gets played through the board, like if I wanted to send some music through my USB, so let me, this is gonna probably copyright the video, but here, I'll play it just a little bit. If I wanted to send some music through USB. So now all of that's being recorded, so I don't have anything plugged in, so I'm just using USB as my example, but I can send all that. And anything that gets sent to the board will get recorded regardless of this MP3 slider. It can be all the way down and it'll still record it, or it can be all the way up, still get recorded. So it doesn't matter whether this slider's up or not. All that matters is that you're counting here. So if you click it once, it'll stop it. And then once you click the uh, stop recording button, it will keep recording, I guess. That's weird. You have to hold this one, I think. And then it will start playing back your recording, which you can hear here. Or you can just click it once to pause it. Now, I think when you're in the recording mode, you can't use Bluetooth. As far as I know, yeah. you can't use Bluetooth once you're in recording. So, like, let me start recording here. So if I click that to start recording, I can't then use Bluetooth. So that's one downside that we're going to have to work out. But other than other that... Oh, it started. That's weird. It started... It started uh, playing my phone. But anyway, so that's one thing we have to get worked out. Once um, you're in the recording mode, you can't use Bluetooth. But uh, that's the only inconvenience. I just wanted to show that I did get this working. And if we go ahead and stop the recording and uh, take it out, it goes back to no. And I'm going to start screen recording on my desktop here. So if I go ahead and plug this in now, I just wanted to show you that the tracks themselves are actually small. So it gets labeled in this folder called JLRIC. And so we can play them back here. Oh, my output's set to USB, so we can't hear. But uh, we can uh, play the tracks. And see, this one is about 40... F nope. This track is a minute long, and it's about a megabyte. So we're going to say it's a megabyte per minute of video of uh, audio recorded. So that's really not that bad. And I think this right here is only a 16 gigabyte SD Not SD card, sorry. A USB stick. And so if you're recording for hours on end, then you should be able to get by with something like this. Like if you record for eight hours, eight times 60 is, I don't even know, probably nowhere close to 16 gigabytes. And so you can just plug this in and record all day. The only downside, again, which I'm gonna keep reiterating because it's something that I need, is that when you're recording, you can't use the Bluetooth. But I'm gonna find a workaround for that, so we should be all set. But anyways, so yeah. Now back to the original video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the unboxing and initial impressions video. Once I'm able to get more experience with using this board in live situations, I will be able to propose and make my final honest review. But obviously I have no idea when that will be, so y'all just stay tuned for that. I do have a couple other videos in the works for this channel, so make sure you guys are subscribed to that as well. If you want to see exclusive content and early access videos, please check out the link in the description below, which will take you to my Patreon page, 
which for as little as $5 a month, you can gain access to all of that information. I just want to again state that this console was provided free of charge to me by Phoenix Pro for the intent purpose of reviewing it for this YouTube video. I did not pay a cent for this thing. Phoenix Pro did send it to me. They have no input on the video whatsoever and they do not get to preview it before it has been published. However, they will see this video after it has been published to YouTube. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed as well and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it so that way it pushes my videos out there to people who are not subscribed to my YouTube channel already. And y'all have a great day and stay safe.